All right, let's check out study link 5.2, extended multiplication facts, everyday math, fourth grade. And um, after study link 5.1, these shouldn't be too difficult, but let's quickly take a look at why this works. So for example, we know six times seven is 42, but what about six times 70 or 60 times 70? Well, what you can do is break down 70 into 7 times 10, right? So then you have 6 times 7, which is 42, and 42 tens, or 42 times 10, is then 420. Same thing over here. 60 breaks down into um, 6 times 10, and 70 breaks down into 7 times 10. And then if you put the 6 and 7 together, you have 42, 10 times 10 is 100, so now you have 42 hundreds, which is 4,200. So they always say just put the zeros on the end, but that's the reason why it works, just because of tens and hundreds and thousands. So you can just pay attention to how many zeros there are here, and that's going to give you your hint. So 6 times 7 is going to be 42 again and then you add the one zero. 60 times seven, six times seven is still 42. You have one zero to add this time. 60 times seven, you have 70. You have two zeros to add. Again, only two zeros to add here, but now you've got 60 times 700 with three zeros to add. So the next two should be um, pretty simple after you've got the idea down. Just be aware here for number four, you have to figure out five times what is 15. And that would be five times three is 15. 30 times what is 150? Well, that would be five. You already had the one zero on the end. 30 times what is 1,500? Okay, we know that's five. We have one zero here, and we have two zeros here. So that should be enough, because now we have the two zeros on either side of the equal sign. So just be careful. It would be easy to make small mistakes here with these. So just be careful as you're working on those. And then once again, we've got some decimal points to deal with for our addition and subtraction. And if you remember from the previous one, the important thing to do here is line up your decimals. So if I'm writing 6.3, 8.7 needs to line up. The decimal is lined up. Ones place, tenths place. And then you can just add like you normally would. So, um, Three tenths and seven tenths is actually going to give me one whole, or ten, but it's one whole. And then I have one plus six plus nine, and the decimal point stays. And you don't even need to write that. If you have point zero, that's the same as nothing on that side. So the answer would just be 15 if you just want to write that. And the next couple, I think you could do or the next one at least on your own. But how about subtraction? Same thing, we need to line up our places, ones place, tenths place, hundredths place, with a th on the decimal places, and then we can subtract. So I can't take away eight hundredths from four, so I can uh, move the tenths over, and this becomes 14, and then I should be good to go six hundredths, two tenths, four, and there's your answer there. So just be careful <clears throat> to line up the decimal points. And um, the other one, I think you should just try on your own. And I think that's all for today. Thank you.